Um, also, we, we're also aware that the foundation of these students' uh, self-esteem is on the line here. If the school does close, um, how, how, how will that affect the kind of treatment and um, special skills that they will be able to acquire in a mainstream environment? Yeah, most of our students come from the intermediate units, and they come in to us uh, from settings where they have most of the time been the only deaf student there. Mm -hmm. and, and they have spent their school day sitting in a desk uh, with an interpreter in front of them with minimal um, communication going on other than to the interpreter and to the teacher in the classroom. Sounds lonely. It's very lonely, and it's very sad, and it's very isolating. And what we see happen here is, you know, after just sometimes just two days it's amazing uh, it's just like water going on a seed in the ground you know the the, the plant just starts blooming and uh, it's it's inspiring to us it's good for the kids um, some some of the kids don't know American Sign Language but they pick it up very quickly and they see very quickly that really this was my native language all the time and um, so there instantly is a comfort level that did not exist anywhere in their world, at home or in school. Do you think it would be helpful maybe to offer a program where public schools could come in for even a day or an hour or um, to actually sit in on, um, on listening or watching what actually goes on in a classroom so they may be able to take a, a, a maybe extra credit or something to, to actually learn to how to adapt to this culture? Are you speaking of deaf students? I'm talking to bring in mainstream students who are hearing, bring them into the school, and give them the opportunity to actually understand that there's a different culture here. We do that all the time. Uh, we do that with uh, all the universities in the area. They're always coming here for observation hours or internships. We do that with, with Girl Scout troops. We do that with many children. Oh, uh, this is a fascinating field to, to many people, and it's a specialized field. and, and People who are deaf and hard of hearing don't necessarily feel that they, they're even a part of special education. It's a specialized education, which is very, very different. These are students who are very bright. And with the right opportunities and with the, with the proper education and the proper language literacy teaching, they excel. And we see that not just AYP, average yearly progress, but ADP, average daily progress. Um, it's very important to us. And I tell people this, we not only know our students by name, but we know them by heart. Wonderful. We also would like to um, ask you that the proposal is also that if the school does close, how are we to be guaranteed that there will be a facility where these students don't have to transport? They said that Pittsburgh is not going to be an option. We don't have anything in, in writing or you don't have any documentation to conclude this evidence, do you? I have nothing. I have nothing. And uh, that's, the, that's the huge concern um, with our parents and, and with how all of this has begun to evolve. Um, the, the school that they're speaking of is a private school. It is a business within itself. Mm -hmm. To run uh, athletic programs, to run a dormitory residence program, to run all the programs that we have that we offer to our students, to me, I do not see how a school could run both and it be financially feasible. Doesn't sound like a possibility, especially in today's economic destruction. I thought that I overheard you mention in last night's program, also on the WVIA, about the school also serving as a resource for deaf children who are in mainstream schools to actually come here for extra. Yes, uh, we do that, and the students do come here. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're working right now with Dunmore School District in this area. Uh, we have a student who, who is mainstreamed there and chooses to learn American Sign Language. And so they have allowed that student to come, with parent permission, of course, to come uh, two hours a day to our school you know, to be exposed to American Sign Language. And then we offer summer camps uh, for children who um, are in mainstream programs. As I have said, many times deaf students are in programs where they're only, they may be the only deaf student or they may be just a few. And, and they love the opportunity of meeting other deaf students to learn, uh, to meet them as new friends, to, to gain more socialization skills, to just uh, be a kid.
Okay, also, um, not every teacher can teach every student. Um, sometimes you need quite a variety of faculty and role models. And I also would like to ask you, what is your, um, what is your advice to, to the teachers and to the students out there who aren't right now being affected by more opportunities to have more interpreter role models than just uh, one student per interpreter? Yeah, that's always um, you know a situation that that we can we can step in and provide some resources. Um, most of the students that are in mainstream programs, you know, their interpreters do communicate with them in American Sign Language. However, it's always good for a student to have more exposure, to have more socialization opportunities, to learn language. Just like I'm speaking to you, you know, I'm learning things from you by getting to know you. And that's the same thing with any student uh, when they're learning uh, a, a language uh, and socialization skills. You want to present as many opportunities as possible for young people um, so that you, you, you don't have gaps in learning or because deaf students, um, you know, they don't hear. And so their acquisition of language comes through visually. And the more visual information that is presented in different environments that is important for them and yeah it's, it's a it's a like I said it's a specialized way to teach our teachers have to be highly qualified in this area and and you have to have the passion you know you have to have the passion to appreciate uh, another language whether you be deaf or hearing uh, we have deaf teachers we have hearing teachers and that's something else I want to point out you know when students come to us uh, they are exposed to very positive role models that are deaf. Um, and that's important. Uh, when a child is growing up, they need to have role models that they can identify with and, and, and model their behavior from. So we intentionally recruit, hire, and, and seek uh, deaf professionals to work here for that reason. They expose the children to more uh, language but they also expose the children to how you make it in the world as a deaf person. They have the opportunity to see a deaf person literally working every day. That's powerful. Very empowering. We have um, deaf actresses and actors, and the thing about that is until I saw a couple movies a couple years ago, I really never gave it any thought that they would achieve such a, such a, uh, status to go in front of public and still be able to just interact on a regular TV show or mm -hmm. a political debate. Yeah, that comes with the skill too. Uh, that's a skill of learning how to advocate for yourself, learning uh, how to work with an interpreter, just like a Spanish speaking person would work with an interpreter. Uh, those are all skills that are taught here with interpreters so that when students leave here, they understand the purpose of an interpreter and how to utilize the interpreter uh, to make sure they're getting their message and their point across. And that's what actresses and actors do too. Uh, they have been taught how to do that, uh, how to watch, how to monitor, to make sure that they are s indeed signing or saying what they intend for them to do. I have seen uh, deaf people working on their PhDs, utilizing an interpreter. And they are so adept at utilizing an interpreter that they watch the interpreter. And they watch the interpreter so closely that they know when that interpreter has made not necessarily a mistake or not said something the way they wanted it said. It's, it's fascinating. That is fascinating. <laughs> well, I really want to uh, appreciate you right now just for the moment for being here with us today. We really thank you and we really hope that more people will understand the deaf culture more by this interview today. Thank you very much. We need all the um, support and kindness and goodwill that, that we can put together.